I'm delighted to welcome back to the show Dave Lotti and Danny Clark from East Riding Futsal Club. Uh, welcome back, chaps. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yep, thank you. Uh, obviously, it's been an interesting season so far since your promotion to the Series 2. Not a bad start to the season, really. No, it's been a good start. We've started off well, started the season well. Then we had a um, couple of tough games, which didn't go our way. Played really well in them, but tough tough games, really. Derby beat us. We got on to BT Sport, and Derby um, turned us over, sadly. Um, so it's given us a different outlook now for the rest of the season. Uh, so we're going to try a new, few new things, see, um, see where the season takes us from now. Yeah, I think, obviously, getting promoted to Tier 2, we've gone through a period where I think probably nearly three years we'd, we'd, you could count on one hand how many games we'd, we'd actually lost uh, in terms of league games. I can could, I could only think of maybe one, lost. one off the top of my head. Uh, and Manchester one it was. Yeah so, yeah, so two in like three years. So to go to Tier 2, obviously, you just up the levels a bit. Teams are... Uh, stronger, uh, more co- the, the coach better. Uh, just overall, it's just a different level. So, yeah, we started off the season really well, going un- unbeaten for a while, and it was just like, oh wow, this is easy. This, but mm. you, you soon hit a wall and, and realize uh, not all is not all is rosy. Yeah, the wheels fell off a little bit. It started we played Sunderland, we ended up drawing seven all, bit of an end to end game, and the wheels started falling off a bit. Bit unlucky then we played Manchester straight after that. I thought we played really well in that game, but we just got beat 6-4. And then, yeah, got a bit of a futsal, bit of futsal lesson from Derby. And then, yeah, wrong end of the scoreline, 6-1 on that one. But we've we, we bounced back since, won a cu- couple more games, so we're hopeful for the season. I was uh, looking at some of your cup results. We've discussed this away from there. Mm. Uh, uh, you said prior to the start of the season, you'd be looking at uh, trying different things in the, those games maybe blooding through a couple of youngsters in those as well as an opportunity to give game time to some of your developing players. Yeah, that's right. We've, we've took this opportunity. We've got seven or eight um, cup games to play against very good opposition, tier one, tier two opposition. So we've decided to mix the team up a little bit. So we're, we're bringing in the under-19s, under-17s lads in, giving them a chance, seeing what they can and can't do against the tier one teams. And all in all, they've done really well. Some of the, some of the players look really good. Not far off being in the first team. Uh, the results haven't gone our way. I think we've only we've won two and maybe lost four. So the results are brilliant, but we've, we've, we've me and Dan have spoke about it a lot, and we've got to look for the future. And just playing the same players every week and doing the same thing every week is not, not the best for the club. So if we can get some of these players playing more regular, more game time, it, when it's got to be better for the club. It shows a really good upward progression as well for lads who are joining it at a younger age too, doesn't it? Yeah, so it's it's obviously difficult for some of the what we class as our our first team players to to accept that sometimes we're not going out to lose, but we're sort of it looks like we're setting them up to lose because we're playing our some of our not weaker players but less experienced players. So for us to feel the team, so when we played Bolton for example, and they've they've got five international players on the court, and we've got. Uh, five, sixteen, or seventeen-year-olds. It looks like we're sent up to those, but it's purely to to gain experience. It's the only way they can. So obviously, that's hard to to put some of the first team players who, who might want to try and compete uh, against them. But people, the players need to understand. Obviously, everything Dave and I do is for the benefit of the club, and we feel the sixteen-year-olds need this game time. It's vital for them to 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 get to get that experience and move forward. And of course, against big opposition such as that, they can then go on and compete in league games if you do need them. Well, they have. They have. So we've we've brought a couple in. A um, couple of them was hopeful of getting the in the uh, England under-19 squad. One was very close. We had a very deep conversation with the head coach, told us where we need to improve, and that, that lad has took it on board, really. And he, he, he looks like a, a different player to what we... What we had at the start of the season, so it, it shows the the opportunities are there, and but that's down to Dave and I to give them game time. And I think at the start of the season, I think if we had give these couple of players game time at the start, they could have been in this England squad now. But 
we went with the with we went for the league, didn't we? That that was our priority. We've gone with the more experienced players, and it, I suppose we had to. And now we've realised the league's probably out out of reach down for us, so we can give these these lads a chance. Show us what they can and can't do. And we'll prepare prepare for next season. Um, and if they do well, like they are, they can they build all the place and hopefully next time the under 19s are looking they'll um they'll be in with a shout of getting a getting a cap you mentioned about blooding these players in you've had to use them a little bit more in the last few weeks uh, with a couple of outgoing players as well yeah so after the the derby game we we realized that we were we basically outclassed by derby outcoached outworked and Dave and I identified we we need a squad of players that we that Dave can coach because some of our better players unfortunately couldn't train every week or they couldn't play every week. Just for example, the game we played against BT, probably our most experienced player couldn't get out of work for it. It's it was a massive game and he just couldn't do it. So we had to look at a club and say, right, we, we don't we don't want you to leave, but you have to understand that there's players that can train every week and. For us to be a better club, a better team, uh, sorry, uh, we need to be coached, and that's what David did against us. So unfortunately, they, these players couldn't, didn't really want to sort of play in our second team or be bit part players and and be there when we needed them. So they they they've left, they've left either for Pastors New or or just stopped yeah. playing, aren't they? Unfortunately. But we've signed we've we've signed two really experienced players from Sheffield, and we've brought two under well seventeen and sixteen year old into the first team squad. So and we've we've totally changed really now. We're looking at how we play, how we defend. We've totally changed how we how we defend. So some of the results might not go to plan in the next few weeks, but it has to be done we've got to change our outlook's changed from that game we've got to, we've got to be better we've got to, I've got to coach the team better and we can we can and it's it's working but it's just going to take a little bit of time we're going to have to take a couple of steps back and some of the results are going to not look great in our favour but I think that's we're looking at it for next season it will um, only make us stronger so just take a step back to make sure you're stronger going forward <laughs> that's it we're going to have to we can't we can we can get players in. We could we could get better players in, but it's not going to take the club forward. These players are just they can play a game, but they can't train, and they can get you to a certain level. But we want we want this club to be one of the best in England, and the only way we can do that is people training every week, playing every week. We're getting the same lads down every week. The coachable, I think that's one of the big things. Can we coach these kids? Um, and at the minute, I think we've got in the squad we've got now, we've got ten people who all want to listen, all want to learn. So I think the Again, for next season, that's what that's our aim now. For next season, it's looking good, looking really promising. You mentioned the derby game on a couple of occasions there as a little bit of a turning point in the season. But to get on BT, to get on one of the biggest stages that there is for futsal, it's great news for the club as well. Yeah, obviously, I think for me, the, the biggest part of the day was seeing Connor Taylor and Alex Keane stepping on court on BT Sport. Uh, they've both they've both been with us when there was playing kids games for us and we obviously got the opportunity we put a platform there for for our young players to to play at the home of England on national TV so that's what we want our club to be able to do going forward for the next 10 years long after I've I've finished playing we want these kids to be uh, local lads representing the area playing playing on national tv playing playing in national tournaments international tournaments that's that was the reason we set this club up because the opportunity is there but yeah that's our aim now there is the opportunity to play on bt if you get to tier one so that's our aim our next season's aim can we can we compete with the big boys so we can get on tier one and, and actually put a performance in maybe not like the derby one we? <laughs> um but we want to get on tv we want to we want to perform on tv and and get to that level but I think we will we'll, we'll, I think I think, it, I think it was massive for for local people to see what the spot actually is I think people thought it was maybe a, a game that's hidden away you don't get to see much uh, and I think it surprised a few people to see it on BT and that BT actually took note of the spot and obviously projected it the way they have but it's been on BT for a few years now it's on it's on YouTube every week uh, so 
that's that's the potential of the sport. It's huge, and of course, uh, you've mentioned how vital the youngsters are going forward. Uh, what are the projects coming up and uh, going ahead at the moment? Uh, I don't know where to start. So, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I could go through the full calendar, but basically, Dave and I are doing two or three hours nearly every night. Uh, I think we get a Thursday off, don't we? Uh, Travelling across the country at weekends with the kids uh, from five years old up to the age of 16 before they reach men's. We've, we've, we've got multi- multiple players at, at each age group. So it's, it's tough, it's hard work, but the opportunities are there. And as we said previously, it's not just about your elite football as we... We've got numerous sessions. We're starting a new session on Saturday, actually, for under nines to under elevens who maybe don't have football teams because we had a Monday session. It's just oversubscribed. We've got twenty four kids coming. We we can't. It's 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 unmanageable. So we're starting a new session, and that's that's filled up to sixteen already. So that starts on Saturday. So we we keep growing. Uh, we keep grafting to make it work. Uh, but yeah, like I say, the opportunities are there. Oversubscribed. It's fantastic for you guys, and and to to build the sport as well is only going to help for the future of the sport and the club too. Yeah, uh, I think we have a responsibility, really, don't we, to try and grow the sport. Obviously, what we do with the futsal league as well. So Dave and I run the futsal league, and we've got I think a hundred and two teams now. Was at eighty two. We've just took another twenty to play on a Wednesday. So I think we're at a hundred and two teams, which if you average that. Eight players a team. We're looking at another 800, 800 kids playing futsal, not for our club in the area on a regular basis. So we've got to project the sport. These players that are, these eight hundred, some of them will filter into our club. Some will filter to other futsal clubs in the area, such as Eagles. So that's all we're trying to do. Can we grow the sport? Because essentially, it's 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 all gonna it's all gonna help everything go forward. And of course, you've developed a women's team this season as well. <laughs> we'll yeah, that. that's, that's, we'll, we'll, we put that on about three or four weeks back. There's been an opportunity to play in a, a national cup tournament. Um, that'll start end of end of February, so maybe a five or six week, five or six week games, and then you'll go into cup finals and what have you, whoever whoever finishes top of the league. So we're hoping. We've got, I think we're up to 16 players now. I think we've got 16 down now that, that was on there tonight. So up to 16 players. It's it's growing more every week since we started. I think we started with 12. It's got up to 16. So hopefully that'll keep growing. And then if the girls like it, again we wanna we wanna put them in the league next year. Again we've got some of the talent that's down there. It, it's looking really promising again. We we'll just need to keep them all together. We we'll just need <laughs> more nights. I think more nights, more venues. Um, you need more days in the week really more, <laughs> more days in the week would be fantastic I think to help us out uh, but the, the girls one I'm that's when we started this four or five years ago this is what we started it for and it's took five yeah. years to finally finally get a, get a girls team a women's team up and running so we got there in the end well that's fantastic news I believe you're looking out for teams to be playing over the next few weeks as well yeah, we're looking for fixtures. Any so if any local local teams want a game, any Sunday league teams, any of the women's teams want a game, um, just get in touch with Danny Clark, and we'll arrange a friendly. Fantastic stuff. Anything else you'd like to mention? Uh, there's, there's, we could talk all night, couldn't we? <laughs> we could talk. <laughs> we could have talk. Have talk. <laughs> yeah, no, we we we, we could. There's, there's so much going on. Obviously, the future of the club. We obviously we, we we're looking at next season having three three male teams one female team um dave and i can only do so much i will be looking for obviously opportunities to, for support um but as it stands we're, we're just cracking on out with but yeah if anyone could uh, <laughs> help fund it all then that would be amazing but like i say we'll uh <laughs> we'll crack on as we are for now yeah and if anybody wanted to get involved uh in terms of i know you were asking for coaches last time but any parents wanting their children to get involved or any young adults wanting to get involved with yeah team? so so if anyone wants their child involved uh, it's basically an indoor version of football it has its own rules it's recognised by FIFA it's fast it's exciting it develop, It develops players uh, at a rapid rate if 
anyone wants to get involved and come try it just contact us on our facebook page he's riding futsal club if anyone wants to volunteer helping with these kids anyone can help us with with, with sort of anything it would it would be absolutely amazing because we've, we've got a good core group of coaches uh, and we've got i think we're at about 300 kids now and about 50 50 adults so it's it were constantly growing uh, even from last time we spoke so yeah any support would absolutely be brilliant and one last thing when's your next game if anybody fancies going going down to Hull, Hull you've got Union, two you've, you've got, got two, two. Okay. so uh, the well we haven't decided which team's playing on Sunday we don't know if it's our second team or the under 19s uh, the under 18s so either one of them will, will have a game on Sunday uh, in the National Futsal League uh, that is the, the Hull Classico against the Eagles, uh, the big derby. So that'll be good. That'll be at Hull Uni. And the first team are away at Manchester B, which is second versus third. So two massive games on Sunday. And unfortunately, we can only attend one. So, <laughs> yeah. so we'll be looking time. to um, yeah. split yourself in half. Yeah. Well, <laughs> get our revenge on Manchester. Manchester beat us last time, so hopefully. Hopefully we can, uh, we've got a few new recruits in for this, this one so hopefully we can give them a game well thank you very much for your time gents and always a pleasure to have you down and of course as Danny mentioned if anybody does want to get involved uh, your Facebook I believe Twitter and Instagram etc yeah. uh, yeah. you can contact them through there